Okay, so like I said, guys, um, make sure the 8.1 online book page is um, completed for Monday. And you guys have already um, told me that that showed up. In fact, I looked around, a few of you are already into that already, and that's great. So, uh, yeah, I think today's section will be pretty easy. Um, that being said, though, uh, we still need to know the, uh, uh, oh, I guess for lack of a better term, we need to understand what the building blocks are for this section right here. So we're going to start looking today at points, lines, and planes um, as part of a geometry unit that we're going to be discussing. And uh, as we kind of progress through this chapter, you're going to start having to use justifications to make sure you can tell me why something is the way it is. And uh, I guess in a nutshell, a lot more explaining of stuff as much as, oh, the answer is this because you said so. There's going to be a lot of explanations. You're going to say this equals this, but then you're going to have to justify steps uh, as we progress. So uh, I guess my first question to you is this. How many of you have heard of points, lines, and planes before? Okay, so mathematically, a volunteer to tell me what a point is. We've done points and stuff before. What do you what do you think your best definition of a point is? It's like a, a, a dot on like a graph or like a plane that kind of it, it meets it does it meet its two numbers kind of just like So like in the coordinate plane, is that yeah. what you're talking about? So in the coordinate plane you might have two things like this. You might have a point like four comma five, go right four and up five and plot that. So it's like a location somewhere, right? Yeah. So a point can be, yeah, exactly that. Um, it's like a location, exactly. Um, guys, I'm going to run uh, up here and, and, and run through this essential question here first. Um, before I do that, that's a pretty good explanation of a point there, Carson. Line. What's a line? Give me an example of a line anywhere in this building, I guess. On the ceiling. On the ceiling, all right? It's like the tiles. They would form the edge of the tiles, all right? I always think of the basketball court, the sideline, baseline, stuff like that. This line. That line right there. Okay, the lunch line. <laughs> That's a good one. That's uh, lunch club. Lunch club. I like that. I like how you said that. Lunch club. Lunch line. That's probably your most important line in the day, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Are you guys fortunate to be at the beginning of the lunch line or the end of the lunch line? Sometimes we've been there for several years to let you know. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? So stop talking about the lunch line. Okay. I think I might go to Ponchero's today. Oh, that's <laughs> that's <is> hard. <laughs> Dude, I haven't been chasing that. I do too. It's bad. Yeah. It Want to go? Bad. Yeah. Maybe you and I can help each other through that problem. Yeah. <laughs> my By eating it. Uh, my friend's making a documentary on it. Oh. called a Poncho Day. Yeah. I like that. That's clever. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. Okay, so points and lines, I think you've got a pretty good understanding. What's a plane? Mathematically, what's a plane? A grid. It's like a grid, okay? It's not something that I'm afraid to get on and go from place to place, okay? Um, a plane. I guess the best way I think of a plane is like a, what type of surface is your table? Flat. 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 If you can think of like a flat surface, a flat surface is a plane in this <laughs> section, I think things will be pretty easy, okay? So today what we want to ask is the following. How can you use what we call dynamic geometry software to visualize geometry <laughs> concepts here, okay? And uh, part of what we talk about is going to come from um, your dynamic ebook, and we'll look at some stuff there. But I think with the notes today, we've got a pretty good handle on what's going on. So goals to answer that question. We're going to name points, lines, and planes. Uh, we're going to name segments and rays. Uh, we're going to sketch some intersections of lines and planes. And then we're going to look at some solving of real life problems that involve lines and planes. In order to be able to do this, we've got a lot of vocab to cut through. So first thing I'm going to get through, undefined terms. All right, take a second and read that as I read it aloud. It says, words that do not have formal definitions, but there is agreement about what they mean. So in geometry, we all agree what a point is. We all agree what a line is. And we all agree what a plane is. They don't define that much, but we all agree what they are. Okay. So Carson already told us a point. A point is like a location in space that's represented by a dot and has no dimension. All right? Has no dimension. It's just a, a, a point in space. So our best explanation was on the coordinate plane, 
this might be a point right up here, okay? That point might be right up there, so that's considered a point, all right? The second one is a line. You all know what a line is. A line is um, anything that has one dimension. It's represented by a line with two arrowheads. Lines go on for what? They go on forever. Okay, lines go on forever. So, I guess the big idea would be to just sketch something like this. Anytime you draw a line, make sure you have an arrow at the beginning and an arrow at the end. All right? That indicates that that's a line. Okay, and then a plane. I already kind of told you what a plane is, but a plane is a, the big idea here that you may want to underline is, it is a, what kind of surface? Flat surface made up of two points that has dimensions and extends without end and is represented by a shape that looks like a, oh, a floor or a wall. Wall, floor, and the floor flat. Okay, so that would be considered a plane. All right, that'd be considered a plane. Anything that's a flat surface would be considered a plane. All right, the way they typically draw planes uh, in mathematics, they typically draw something that looks like this. Okay. It's like a flat surface. They give us some depth right here. If you look at this parallelogram, don't think of it as a parallelogram. Think of something that you're looking at three dimension. This is like the front edge of the floor. This would be like the back edge of the floor. So like right here, if you were standing right here at the doorway back there, can you imagine going from a doorway to doorway to Miss Jensen's room? Like if you were standing here and then walk across right here, think of it that way. This is like the floor surface right here. It's flat. It has like a dimension. Okay. Collinear points. How about a volunteer to read collinear points? I, let me hold on. Carson, question? You could draw a table like this. What's that? You could draw a table like this. I didn't hear you. You could draw a table like this. Table legs, yeah, yeah. Table legs. Yeah, I can do that. So kind of make it three dimensional. Is that what you're saying? So if I drew a leg here, 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 and there's a hidden one right there, right? You see how it's kind of flat right there on the table now? Tabletop. All right. Make sense to everybody? So if you ever see that parallelogram like that, that just represents a flat plane. Okay, collinear points. Somebody want to read what collinear points? Points that lie on the same line. Points that lie on the same line. So if I had a line like this, if I had a line like this, here's a line. And maybe I had some points on this line. I might have a point here. Point here, point here, and a point here. And maybe we label these points. We call it first point U, second point H, third point S. All right? We say that those three points are, what's the word here? Collinear because they lie on the same line. Okay? What if I took H and moved it off the line? Then all those points would be, instead of collinear, they would be non-collinear. Okay, points that don't lie in the same line would be non-collinear. All right. Okay, uh, define terms <coughs> are terms that can be described using uh, known words such as a point or a line. So for instance, right here, this line up here, I can give this line a lot of different names right up here. Okay, give me two points that that line passes through. Any two points. U and H. So I can say a name for this up here is the line, and we put a little line um, symbol up there. This could be the line UH. Or another name for this line could be HS. Or maybe another name for this line is S back to U. Okay? What's another name? Instead of UH, I can go backwards and call it H what? HU, right? Or SH. or US. That makes sense to everybody? Okay, so naming stuff. When you're able to name stuff, then all of a sudden, instead of having an undefined term, this becomes a defined term. All right? How about volunteer to read what a line segment is for me? Consists of two end points and all the points that meet. Okay, so basically the way I like to think of a line segment is this. A line segment looks like this. It has a starting point and an ending point. Okay, so... Whoops. You might have this point as your start and this point as your end. Okay, we'll pick some cool letters maybe, like 
like this. Okay. Are there arrows on that line? No. When there's arrows on a line, it represents that it goes on infinitely in both directions. When I have endpoints like this, there's a starting point and an ending point. Listen to this question. Which of the two, line segment or a line, has a dimension? Or in other words, you can measure the length of it. A line segment. A line segment because there's a start and an end. So think of line segments as something you can measure. Can you ever measure the length of a line that goes on forever? No. Okay. All right. And then finally, endpoints. Endpoints are just the points that represent the ends of the segments. So in this example right here, your endpoints are what two points in the example right above, guys? J and what? Two best letters in the alphabet, right? <laughs> Sorry. How's your proposal? Go. Did it get rejected or accepted? Oh, from business? Yeah. It was kind of weird. Okay. All right, everybody have that part down, all that stuff down, first page? Yes, no, yes? Yep. All right, page two, okay? And guys, I kind of screwed up in some of the drawing here. We've got a few more uh, uh, vocab uh, words to get through. Guys, array. What's your best definition of array? I know you've heard of it before. What's array in geom uh, geometrics or geometry? Anybody know what a ray is? What do you think, uh, Andrew? It, it does. It does. Remember, a line goes infinitely in both directions. It's like a line with two dots at the end. No. Either one dot at the end and an arrow to the end, or two dots. So if I understand you correctly, you're saying there's one dot to start with, and then it moves on. Does it ever stop from there? No. So it's like a line that has a starting point, but no end. Very good. Yeah, it's a line with a start and no end, exactly. So an example of this might be the following. Um, do a line that looks like this. Now, anytime you have a ray right here, guys, you always name the end point or the start point, if you will. I, I don't know why they call a ray having an end point like that. I think that's really a starting point because um, if you start here and move infinitely to the right, you might have like this right here. Um, you might have the letter I right here. Anytime you have a ray, one point you always want to have on a ray is your starting point, okay? And then maybe this passes through a point H right here. So you might have the ray IH, okay? The ray IH, okay? Guys, if you have one ray, what do you think an opposite ray is then? What do you think the opposite ray to a ray IH would look like? Thoughts, Darren? Okay, would be, well, maybe HI, but it might be a ray. What direction is this traveling? So what would an opposite ray look like? Moving to the left. So, yeah, if you said ray HI, if you started here at H and then went through I and kept going, that would go left. So I, I would agree with that. But it's um, just basically two rays on a line that go in opposite directions. So as an example, as an example, you might have a, a line like this might have a line like this. And I'm going to put three points on this. How about the points U and I? U and I. Okay. We have one ray that's the ray N I out here. Start at N, go to I. Start here, moves to the right. What's the opposite ray to N I? The opposite ray to N oh, wait, I. N -U -N. Careful. N -U. Yep, N U. Start at N U and then move left. So these two rays right here, N I and N U, are opposite rays of each other. Notice both rays start with which letter? N. N is like the end point or the starting point for both rays. Okay. You always label a starting point. All right. Then the last couple of things here are pretty easy. Coplanar points. Points that lie in the same what? Okay, here's a question. 
consider this whole flat board up here. I'm going to put three points up here. Point one, point two, point three. Are these three points on the same plane? Are they on the same flat surface, in other words? Yes or no? So these points are coplanar. Now listen to the other question. Are these three points collinear? So if I say, plot me some points that are coplanar but not collinear, that makes sense to you? Why are they coplanar, guys? Why are these three points coplanar? They lie on the same flat surface, same plane. Do they lie on the same line, though? No. Okay, so keep terms like that straight. Okay, coplanar points, points that just lie on the same plane. So if this was your plane right here, a flat surface, you might have a point here, here, and here. All right? Looks like a new emoji that I'm starting to put together there. This will be like my head. I don't know. Maybe that might mean, what would that mean? Maybe you have a crooked back. Maybe that's the crooked back emoji. You like that? Or is that too crazy? You don't like the crooked back emoji I'm starting to form up here with my nine coplanar points up here? I'm sorry, nine collinear coplanar points here? You don't like that? Let them know, but you know, if that can be, if that's the case. Okay, never mind then. Okay. All right. If you think of a better emoji name for that right there, maybe I'll give you five is points extra. Robot? robot? I would say it'd be a picture of you going like this and just smiling. <laughs> that would make me what? That would make me. <laughs> well, keep digging. That, uh, keep trying on that one, all right? Like, it looks like, like a robot. It does look like SpongeBob. But without the mouth, just like oh, his yeah. nose. Well, <laughs> emojis are cool, but I want to get through this stuff here. So, Okay, guys, last thing right here, intersection. Intersection is a set of points or two or more geometric figures they have them come. In a line, in a line, lines can do what? Cross. They can cross. They intersect at a point. Lines intersect at a point. We're going to find out today that planes intersect in a line at some point. So, guys, kind of want to get started here. Um, start looking at example one. I need help. I need help with all the points on this right here. So you're going to have to help me out. Actually, can I borrow somebody's notes here for example one? I'm going to do here, guys. If you notice right here, notice your letters right here. Um, anytime you have letters in here, it's very important to note some stuff. Um, first question I'm going to ask you about example one, where we're trying to name some points and some lines and some planes. Of all the variables or all the letters used to define stuff up there, do all those letters have a point next to them or some of them without a point? Uh, they have a point. A lot of them do, but does every single one of them have a point connected uh, to the variable? Okay. Yeah, there's a few letters that don't. S does. Does S have a point? No. Does C have a point? No. And does R have a point? No. Okay. <coughs> Bless me. Chewbacca. Chewbacca. Sorry. All right. Here's the deal. 
What I want to get at is this. Anything that has a point is already saying, hey, this is a point. And they've defined that point right here. But that S and the R and the C also define stuff. Guys, this lowercase r, what's this lowercase r pretty darn close to? What is this right here? It's a line. Usually lowercase letters represent line. All right? So in this right here, do you guys see the flat plane that's in here? Can you guys see the flat plane that's in here? Okay. What do you think we're going to call this plane name? C. C. It's plane C. All right? It's plane C. So we line it Through it or on it, we have a line R, and then we have a lowercase s right here, and then we have this line s right here. So the lowercase letters, R and s, I'm going to tell you right now, R and s, they are both lines. Okay, now I don't know how to do this very well, and I'm going to do my best to explain it. Okay, so you guys see your plane right here. This is a flat surface, is it not? Everybody see it? Okay, now imagine this being flat like this. Okay, this is plain C. This piece of paper is plain C. Are you okay with that? This is plain C. Okay, that line R that's there is line R that is right on top of the plane. It lies right on top of it. Okay? I think what I want you guys to do for this S, I don't know how to do this or how to maybe make this work better. But maybe what you want to do is put some dotted lines right about here and really highlight them like this, okay? What I'm trying to get you to visualize here in this example is the following. The line R is lying right flat on this. Can you guys imagine a line R being drawn on this sheet of paper like this? Okay, now the line S with these dots right here means you can't see that part of the line. What that means is this. dotted lines like that on a line like we have on line S. Instead of line, like a line drawn on there, like line R is, line R is drawn on that flat piece. That's what that means. Now, when you start seeing dotted lines like I have highlighted in red, that means that, that that line is coming from the bottom, and it's going through a point passing through the plane. Does that make sense to you when you see it that way? Okay. That's what's going on. So lines can be right on a plane, or a line might pass through a plane. Make sense? And you'll know a line passes through a plane is not, and not lying on a plane when you have what here? Dots, Dots here. Okay. Do they go off to the side of the line? They do. They do. I had a hard time trying to recreate what it was for the notes, and this is the best I could come up with. I think that when you see it on your assignment uh, in Big Ideas, you'll really, there's a better illustration there, and I think you'll, you'll feel that. Okay. So, um, R and S are lines, okay? Line R is on... C or on plane C, line S passes through, passes through plane C. Okay, so that's what I want you to understand in this illustration right here. I think with the visual that I just showed you right there, that makes better sense now. All right, 
So if there's ever a dotted line, it's like a line going and puncturing the plane and passing through to the other side. Does that say on C passes into? Yep, the first one is on C. Okay, so line R is right on C because there's no dotted line to it. So it's laying right flat on the surface. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. We need to give two other names for line DE and for plane C. Okay. So here we go. Uh, another name for line DE. Anybody have an idea about how else we can name line DE? Nice thing about this is there's multiple ways. Which points are on DE, guys? DA. DA, all right. Which I hope you don't think I am. All right. Get it? All right. I'm an SA. Yeah. <laughs> all right. What's another name for the line DE? AE would work. Would um, would ED work? Would EA work? Any of those would. I have an idea. How about line R? Could I call this just line R? Could I call it line R? Is line R okay? Is that okay? Yeah. All right, line R. How about plain C? Another name for plain C. Well, C defines this whole plane, right? I could pick any letter that's on the plane here that would work. So I could call this plane what if I wanted to? Plane F or plane FD or whatever, okay? Um, maybe I pick three points, plane FAD, whatever, all right? Maybe I could call this plane F. Maybe plane FAD. Aren't points F and A and B on that plane right there? Are you okay with that? Are we okay with that? Okay. Part B says name three points that are collinear. Can you find me three points that lie on the same line? D, A, and E. So for the collinear part, I could have D, A, and E. What else is collinear? S-A-B, right? Name four points that are coplanar. Any four points that lie on that plane. By the way, does the point B right here lie on that plane, if that's going up vertically through there? It intersects right through here at A. That's A is where the hole is in the paper that I showed you. But B is actually above, isn't it? Okay. So give me, uh, give me four points that are coplanar, guys. F, A, D, and E, right? Okay. Fade. Okay. Why isn't B used there, guys? Why is B not part of that plane? Yeah, it's going through the paper and it's actually above that plane, isn't it? Okay. Are we good on that first example? Hold on. I'm holding on. Time to let go? Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. Never let go. That's probably why I'm so miserable all the time, because the Vikings are still my team. <laughs> <laughs> all right, are we good on Raider Wall on page three? All right, I need some help labeling again. Um, can I look at your sheet again, Taryn, to label these? Maybe segments, rays, and opposite rays. Pretty easy. We've got QPS. So it looks like the intersection of these two lines occurs at which point? Okay, it says give another name for uh, TR. And what I want you guys to do is this. Uh, Put a line uh, um, symbol up above that so I know it's line TR. What's another name for TR, guys? Another name 
Another name for TR. Another name for the line TR. What's that? TP. TP. One of the essentials in life, right? Wait, why? T and P are still on that same line, right? If I started, if I drew a line through T and P, isn't that the same line that goes through T and R? Yeah. Okay, what's another line name for TR, guys? RP. RP or RT or PT. Are there various amounts of names you can use that are correct here, kiddos? Okay. As long as you identify two points in that line, we're good to go. All right. Next one says, name all your rays with endpoint P, and which of these rays are opposite rays? Okay, so the first ray I might have is P what? PR. Okay. And I denote it like this, ray PR. It has an endpoint of P, so that means P always has to be listed first. That's where you're going to start. Then you might have ray P to what? <coughs> Well, let me ask you this question. Let's, let, let's kind of kill two birds with one stone here. I've already identified ray PR. Which ray is opposite of PR? PT. PT goes the opposite direction, doesn't it? So I'm going to say PR and ray PT, they are opposite rays. Ray PR and ray PT are opposite rays. Okay. So then give me the other two ray names that are opposite of each other. PS, I want some candy, and PQ. So quickly, have I named all four rays with um, endpoint P? Have I accomplished that? Yeah. And have I told you which rays are opposite of each other? Now keep in mind, the way the book is written up, they say an endpoint for a ray is point P. I always think of rays as having a starting point but no end. So don't confuse endpoint of a ray with where it starts. Does that make sense? Very good. All right, example three. Sketching intersections of lines and planes. This says sketch two intersecting lines, A and B, that lie in plane what? Okay, here's what you're going to draw. We're going to draw a plane. Remember, a plane for me is like a parallelogram. Okay, a plane for me is like a parallelogram. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a parallelogram quickly. I'll do the best I can do. Okay, there's my flat plane. That's like the floor that you're looking at. That makes sense, everybody? Okay, what are we going to label that plane? Plane what? So down here in the bottom, I'm going to put a big W. All right? And then I just want to put two lines, A and B, in there that do what, guys? Put two lines in there, A and B, that are going to do what? Cross. Cross. Now, will my lines have any dotted part to it if they're in the plane, or will they be solid everywhere in the plane? I want them both to be in the plane. So will it be like a drawing on the paper, or will it be something that's passing through? In the plane? Yep, it's passing through. in the plane. Oh. So it's got to be drawn right on there, right? So will I have any dotted lines to any of my lines? No. no, I will not. Okay, so here's what we're looking at drawing. Two lines that intersect. Here's a line in this plane. Here's a line. I maybe call this line A and this line B. Do those, tiny, uh, do those two lines intersect in there? It's kind of like two lines that are just laying flat on the floor. Okay, that's your best drawing right there. Again, if they ever say, hey, draw a plane, typically a parallelogram. All right? That's what you would have. Okay, my next page. Let me know if you're ready, kiddos. Rock and roll. Questions to this point right now? You guys feel pretty good about this? Okay. Yeah. Well, up here then, sketch line D that intersects plane D in only one point and label that A. This is the one. Here's your plane right here, this flat piece of paper. And instead of this intersecting in multiple points lying on the plane, it actually passes. Uh, there it is. We 
are on B. Okay, this is the kind of thing that happens when you have a line intersecting a plane in just one point. It's like a line passing through the plane. Okay, so I will show you how to do this. I'm going to do my best to sketch this. You guys don't draw. Well, go ahead and draw your plane. Draw your plane right now. There it is. Draw your plane right now. What's the name of the plane? There's your plane. So I'm going to label this plane D. Yep. Okay, then what kind of plane? Airplane? Plane is it a regular or a flat surface plane? Okay. By the way, if any of you guys are taking woodworking or anything down in the shop, what machine do you run a board through to flatten it out or have a flat surface? What's it called? A planer. I know. Okay. Right? I hated that. In eighth grade, Mr. I All right. So here's the deal. Here's how I want to draw this. This is going to be a line D that intercepts the plane D in only one point. We're going to label that point A. So we're going to say, you know what? This point A, it's like a line that, that pierces through there. Like if you can imagine a sheet of paper right there, and dare I say this in school, but I'm going to say it anyway, if you have maybe a BB gun, oh. all right, all right, How and you shoot through that paper, can you imagine the line that that, that uh, BB takes, pierces yeah. the paper? It just passes, well, let's say that we're shooting it, Straight down, like this, like that, all right? Go that, that would be straight, wouldn't it? Okay. So here's how I think you should draw your line, guys. Don't draw your line until I'm done, okay? Don't draw your line until I'm done. I'm positive. You trust me, right? Here's how this should look when you're done. Yeah, Gavin. Yeah. 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 All right, hang on a second. Hang on. I'm trying to perfect this. Well, you can always strive to be perfect, right? Yeah. All right, if you can kind of imagine this right here, you know what? I'll just draw it in here. This part right down here, I can see this part of the line. I can see this part of the line right here. That's going to be solid. Okay, this dotted part means that's the part you can't see underneath the plane right there. And then from here, at this point, this is where the BB came out of the paper and continued its way through. That's what you would draw. Okay, and at what point am I labeling here? So that would be your line D that passes through there. Guys, what does this dotted line mean right here? This part or this dotted line part right here? Oh. Can't see it. The part that's red solid up here is the part above the plane. The part that's dotted right here is the part you wouldn't see in the line that's kind of covered up by the bottom part going through. And then once you finally have access to see it, you'll see the rest of it going through there. Okay? Oh, wait. Is that a D? That's a plain D. This is a little D. Okay? So from, from, point, from point A up, it's a solid line. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So here we go. You okay with that drawing? Yeah. All right, so anytime you see dotted lines like this, that means that that line is not laying flat in the plane. It means it's crossing through the plane. All right? Okay, letter C, what are we sketching this time, guys? Somebody tell me what I have to sketch. Read that. Oh, uh, I've got to put some arrows in here. Is there a line uh, up here, guys, like this? Um, yeah. For PQ? So this says, sketch a plane X. All right, let's get our plane. What am I going to draw for my plane again? Draw a what? Draw what? Well, my plane X, so we just draw a parallelogram, right? OK. All right, so here's plane X. I'm going to put an X down here, plane X. We need to draw a line PQ in there. That contains PQ. Will there be any dotted lines if it's in the plane, that whole line's in the plane? Or will it be solid everywhere? If the line is in the plane, it means it's on the whole flat part. So here's your line on that plane. We're going to label that line what, guys? PQ. Take a point P. 
pick a point Q. And in this plane, we need to choose a point V, not on what? Not on the line. So pick any point in that plane that's not on the line and label it what? PVQ is pretty close to BBQ, and now I'm hungry again. I could really go for some pots right now. I could really go for some famous Dave's ribs, too. We should, shouldn't we? Maybe we could make sure, we, maybe we should see if the tables at Famous Dave's are planar, flat. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. Guys, the one that gets kind of difficult is this to sketch. They're going to start asking you to inter or intersect planes. The best example I can give you about intersection of planes here to end, guys, or get close to ending is this. Guys, is the wall right here, is that wall right over there a plane? No. Yes, it is. It won't assume so, right? And is the ceiling a plane right here? Okay, this whole flat ceiling and that whole flat wall, where do they meet at? Right up here at the top. What's formed up here when two planes meet then? Is it a point or is it a line? Yeah, this edge right up here is a line, isn't it? So the point I'm trying to make right here is this, that when two planes intersect with each other, I'm going to do my best to make this. Don't laugh at me. When two planes intersect, hold that for me, Miriam. Do you agree that Miriam's got a flat plane right there? Do you agree that I have a flat plane right here? I'm going to intersect these two planes. Do you see where these form or intersect right here? The points that are shared are shared right here on this line, aren't they? That makes sense yet? So here's the best way I can tell you how to draw two intersecting planes. All right? You ready for this? You ready for this? Here's how this is going to work. I'm going to draw a plus sign here. I'm going to put another plus sign about the same size back here. Ah, Okay, here's the best way I can tell you how to draw planes. You ready for this? Once, once you have your two plus signs about the same size right there, just connect your corresponding points. So for instance, this top to this top, here to here. You guys see that first plane that I've drawn? Okay, now connect the right side with the right side. And the back side with the back side. I'm going to make this a dotted line in the back. Well, you know what? I'll just draw it like this. Yep, so let me back up. There's your plus signs right there, right? So I would take this top and match it with the top here. Okay? That was that right there. You okay with that? Now match the bottom with the bottom. You see the first plane I formed right there? That first plane is like the piece of paper that's up and down. That's like the wall. Now, I'm going to have a flat surface going horizontally through that. Here, here. Okay? Now, the one piece that you want to make sure that you highlight or get in there for sure is this one. The one that connects the middle. Middle point to middle point. So this was the middle of my plus sign. This was the middle of my plus sign. That red line right there is the point where those two planes do what? Where they meet. So the whole idea about sketching intersections of planes is to understand this. When you sketch your two planes, R and S, they intersect in this point line A and B right here. Okay? If you don't get it right now, we'll fix the fifth hour. Okay? Here's the situation, guys. What I want you to understand is this. Anytime you have two planes that intersect, intersecting of planes always leads to a line being formed. All right, so here's the whole idea about this. When we have two lines that intersect, they meet in a point. But two planes, two planes that intersect, two planes that intersect form a what? When two planes intersect, what is formed? A line. Okay. So that's what's happening there. 
Cool with that? All right. Again, if you didn't get the drawing down exactly like I have it, that's fine. Uh, we'll work on that, okay? I want to get through the last example, which is very simple. Um, so we'll come back to that tomorrow if we need to. I just want to make sure we get this done in the last five minutes here. Guys, I need help on my points on the last page. Can I look at that again? Okay, up here, guys, we have a diagram that shows a juice box. And your points are Q, P, So guys, here's a box. Here's a box right here. You can imagine Q, P, M, and N being in the front. You can see the back K, R, L, and S uh, are on the back. It says name two different planes that contain the line Q and what? Q and P. Well, Q and P is like the edge to the, can you guys see the front of this right here? Can you see the front of this? Can you see the bottom of this? The bottom of this being down here and the front right here. So guys, one plane would be the plane, name two different planes that contain QP. Plane Q to P, all right, Q to P, let's go on the front side. So if I go from Q to P, do I go up then? Where would I get to? Do you guys agree that the QP and the M are points that form the front of that box? Now front of the box is flat, so that's a plane, isn't it? And then also we said QP is an edge for the front and the bottom. So what's the name of the second plane? Q, P, and S. What's that? Um, did I say Q, P, and M right here? You could uh, label it that way too. Remember, you only need three points to make a plane. Okay? You only need three points that are nonlinear to make a plane. Okay? Because if I have this point, this point, this point, make a flat surface, it's going to include which point? Oh, I, I got to set NQP too if I want to. Okay. How do you feel about this? Okay. Um, I sent the assignment out. Do what you can with it. Remember, people that uh, people that made arrangements with me to finish up the test, make sure you follow through. And um, um, I don't think I've got time to show you your actual test, so if you want to see your actual test, stop in at a later time today and I'll, I'll show you what. what